Matt, here's the elephant in the room, though. Totally. We got two trillion dollars of multifamily mortgage debt outstanding. Now this this is a, this is not all coming due right away. Mm-hmm. Like this is this is just everything that's out there, right? Yeah. But it's a lot. Two trillion dollars of, of, of just debt. Um, no, but a lot of it is coming due. Mm-hmm. So we're at the front of this wave again. Um, w- just internally, you know, we've been saying here at Great Capital that it's going to be quiet. Yeah. It's going to be really quiet until things start happening. And, and what that looks like when things start happening is yet to be seen. Um, but October, as we are right in the middle of October, it's October 12th today, Matt, we're at the beginning of this wave front of maturities. Um, that This is just CMBS, which is, which is just a fraction of all of the overall loans that are out there, but just the CMBS that are coming due. Um, we've got $8 billion coming over the next two months. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we did some um, analysis, most likely, you know, total, you know, based on percentage of CMBS relative to the rest of the market, there's probably going to be about $40 billion that are, that are going to be coming due every single um, in October and November of this year. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it could be more. But then throughout 2024, you know, we still see this, you know, constant um, march of maturities um, and really kind of crescendoing again um, in, at the end of 2024 and into January of 2025. So we're not going to be out of the woods for a while. Yeah. Again, the, you know, the question is, you know, what will lenders do? What will they accommodate? Mm-hmm. Um, will kicking the can down the road even be a practice that, it, that is, is a worthwhile endeavor? Is that is it going to get you anywhere? Yeah. Chasing good after bad. For what? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if rents were growing and the fundamentals were perfect, you can make a case that you just need a little bit more time. Yep. But if you can't chart that course of success and getting out, you know, really prolong the pain. But as we've said also before, Matt, there's really no incentive to kind of mid defeat early. Yeah, there's you know? no incentive, definitely. And and it, we've seen dramatic examples of this from um, from uh, owners that were facing you know a, a huge interest rate crisis, and then you know listening to a interview with them, there there's not a sweat. Not a drop of sweat on their face. They are calm, cool, and collected. That's their job. Their yeah. job is to communicate uh, is to, is to communicate that the ship isn't sinking while the ship is sinking. They have got to keep everyone everyone happy at the moment, and um, there is no benefit for them to say that, that there's a crisis right now. So we won't we won't hear about it until maybe even the end. You know, this first wave till the end of the month. Is that when is that when the bills from the banks come in, or is it all? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so this is a breakdown of um, the. The debt that's out there. Who are the lenders? Um, now, the agencies we know, Matt. They're, they're, they're the big. They're the big lenders out there. You know, they're making up more than fifty percent of the market. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Um, the banks and thrifts, which you know, are a lot of again regional banks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're the ones that are issuing not exclusively bridge loans, but a lot of that is the bridge loans. The CMBS number that we said. That's just that's that's sixty five billion right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, the, and then so that that's. That, you know that's indicative of the rate of expirations, essentially based on uh, the cadence of transactions going back to 2021 in Q4. Okay. But this 600 billion dollar number, it's a lot. It's you know that that the eight billion in October and September, that's a yeah. lot. Man, you know, but um, 65 compared to 600 billion, um, that that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, that that is a lot. Um, and so the the on the upside, there is a lot of agency debt out there. To most of the long term floating in fixed rate, and again, I do, do think that provides a floor to the market, mm-hmm. a lot of stability. When we look at our portfolio, you know, we have assets that are you know locked up in debt for um, as short as seven years. Mm-hmm. That's the shortest, and as okay. long as thirty five years. Wow. Um, you know, much of that, most of that is fixed. Mm-hmm. We've got a little bit of floating rate. But like you know, our property you know bill is on fur up in Granger, Indiana. Mm-hmm. You know we have a two point seven percent interest rate that's locked in for. You know, we've had a, that loan now for a couple of years, so we have thirty two more years left on the term. Yeah, it, it's still ninety six percent occupied. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, it's throwing off ten percent cash on cash. There's you know there's not a whole lot for us to worry about. Yeah, like, there, there's there is no existential crisis, and we could go down. I mean, we've like doubled our NOI over the first couple of years. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, many owners and many property properties are highly insulated, mm-hmm. which is why it's a great investment vehicle. Is if yeah. you do yeah. it the right way, you can really insulate yourself from a lot of market volatility. But unfortunately, we got a lot of this debt that is not insulated. A lot of these assets that are not insulated 
from some of this yeah. volatility. Higher for longer rates change the calculus for borrowers. Matt, again, this is really just going to show that um, rates are not coming to save the day yeah. for many borrowers, as was the hope. I don't know how many people told us. Smart folks. Yeah. In the beginning of this year, they're like, well, we think that your know, rates will be down close to the end of the year. We're hoping that we're going to refinance. If not, you know, then what? Mm -hmm. They were like, well, we're not sure. That's one rates aren't going, rates aren't lower, and that's one thing that has also yeah changed since June is projections have gotten higher for longer. Um, one of one of which is the FOMC themselves. They used to think that at the end of 2024 it was going to be 4.5, still elevated, yeah, and still probably would cause a lot of pain and hopefully maybe motivated some people to cut their losses. But then the other um, the the other figure now is at 5.1 percent that they project at uh, at the end of 2024. So. Things are going up, and it is. I think also this the the recent elevated job growth numbers support this projection of elevated interest rates through the end of 2024. And even if they started lowering them sometime close to now, it's yeah. going to take a long time for them to come down. Yeah, not anytime soon. Yeah, I'm just looking at delinquency rates, um, outstanding delinquent loan uh, balance by pay status. I mean, the good news, Matt, is you know we don't see you know a huge rush of delinquency yet, which again, which was anticipated because there wasn't a whole lot that going on before October. Mm -hmm. It has been increasing on a month by over month basis. Now there was a huge spike um, early on in COVID, and we've never have really gotten off of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of that is probably a lot of mom and pop operators. Mm -hmm. be curious, and you know, why during a period of so much growth, so many people. You know, remain delinquent. Yeah. Um, but it after it kind of declined, it has been creeping up, and um, we we the base of the default rate. You know, you know, it, it, to to shock everyone, it's tripled, but it's tripled from basically a point two to you know a point six. Yeah. So you know, we're still at one percent in terms of like default rates. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know we would be at the leading edge if we saw one of those defaults. And again, the first step is not to default; it's not yep. to foreclose. It's, it's, it's a whole process, and typically borrowers and lenders are trying to work things out. 